Hello and welcome back to our Arturia Moog Modular series and this is the, the last of the videos in which I'm going to break down the modules component by component and after this we'll dive into the, the preset world where we actually get to hear all of this stuff really coming together. So a whistle stop tour of a few of the components that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, this one up here uh, is the noise generator and we have white and pink noise. The difference is white noise is the entire frequency range. It's the most frequency rich sound there is. And what it sounds like is horrible. That's noise. It's basically atonal and it's used not for that, but it's, it's typically used to apply a modulation to some other sound for the purpose of randomization. So if we take the noise signal into this filter and then come out of the filter into the VCA, now we get to add a little bit of distortion to the sound, a little bit of noise should call it noise rather than distortion. Both of those things are adding extra frequencies to sound. That's all distortion is. Okay, and the difference between white noise and pink noise is that um, if we go back to the pure horror. Okay, pink noise is lower. Listen. Okay, you get a lower rumbling. So internally, a low pass filter has been applied to the pink noise generator to take some of the higher frequencies away. So it's not purely random because it's been focused on a frequency range, but it is still random in, in the context of it being noise. That's that. Uh, these two filters up here are basically hardwired low pass and high pass filters. So if I come out of this, oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do at all. I'll come out of the, out of this, into here, out of here, into here. So now we're going through our low pass filter, but we're also going through this secondary low pass filter. So if I turn this all the way up, that's the natural sound that we have out of the out of the, um, the module itself. Now as I turn the dial down, I throw high frequencies away. To apply an overall effect to the sound. It's just a, a convenient, it's always there, an extra LPF for you to use. And the high pass filter barely needs talking about but we'll cover it very quickly same kind of idea but this time because it's a high pass filter we get the full normal sound when the knob is turned all the way down because none of the low frequencies have been cut away and as we turn the knob clockwise we're going to throw those low fre frequencies away only be left with the high stuff and the sound will get thinner until it disappears completely. Okay, that's nice and easy. Back to our basic sound. This set of sockets over here are used for like system-wide modulation effects. So if we want velocity, how hard we hit notes, to have some kind of effect on this filter, say for instance, that's pressing the note quietly, pressing the note loud, you get much more filter. This is after touch. So that's me just playing the note normally. Now I'll go into the after touch. Straightforward enough. We've already got the modulation wheel wired into something. It's applying an amplitude modulation to the frequency modulation of this driver. Um, so modulation wheel all the way down. Coming up. You can hear the 
frequency wobbling. Key follow. Now this is one of the things I missed out on the epic key follow video I've done recently. Um, these are means by which you can apply a variable effect to the entire key follow settings. So if I take this cable out of socket two into the LPFs modulation and turn K2 all the way up nice and high. So we have a, a key shift on C3. So if I play C2 now, it's gonna sound muddy and real dull because key follow is throwing away all the high frequencies. If I dial this back, those frequencies will return. So we have a, a variable means of controlling our key follow via these sockets here. Uh, we've dealt with the sequencer before, I think. I'll just I'll I'll go back and check through the videos. I'm pretty sure we've dealt with them. And if we haven't, I'll deal with it in a future video in one of the presets. 2D pads. Uh, so here we have our 2D pad controllers. There are two of them, independent A and B. So if I take a couple of sockets, a couple of jacks, why do I keep saying sockets? A couple of cables out of these controls here and turn them up. Now you can see filter one, frequency modulation two and filter one, frequency modulation three. So that's these two sockets here. And so this is this uh, joystick control will now have uh, an, an, an effect on the on, on the low pass filter. As I say, there are two of them. So those two sockets there are for controller B. Let's deal with the whole issue of glide uh, between notes. So we have a glide knob uh, on the keyboard and that can be on or off when it's on. Then we set our glide time here. So let's have it nice and big so that we can, we can hear what's going on. And now if I play a note, I'll play, there you go, there's the C. And I play an F. See, you can hear that I'm leaving a gap in between the playing of the notes. It still glides down from one note to the other. If I hold those notes down, it does exactly the same thing. If I turn legato on, now, if I play the C and then the F, it just plays the note pure, straight straight onto the C, straight onto the F. But if I hold notes down, it slides or glides. So legato, basically, you always get the same effect, whether or not this is on or off, when you're holding multiple keys down. But when you play individual notes, with legato on, you, you get the actual note, and with legato off, it includes the slide or glide. <laughs> I don't know whether to say slide or glide. I'll, I'll use them interchangeably. Retrig, in order to show you retrig, I need to attach an envelope to this sound. So here's our envelope. So I've set uh, an envelope with a pretty high attack and nothing else. Oh, there's a bit of release actually, let's turn that off. A nice high attack into the filter. So now, every time I play a note, you get that envelope sweep. Let's make it even more dramatic. There we go. Now then, what Retrig does is it ensures that that envelope still fires if you play continuous notes. So C, F, that's always gonna fire, regardless of whether this button's on or off. But if it's on, You 
can hear the envelope coming to an end, but then it immediately refires. Turn it off. And once it's gone, once that envelope is done, once its juice is spent, there's no more to be had. And there it comes. Okay. So you still get the envelope of its in its full duration, and then it refires. That's what retrig does. All of that stuff only works in mono. If you're in poly mode over here, you get a completely different. You know, it's now playing as a synthesizer. It's not doing the sliding between notes. So just bear in mind that all of this stuff, the the, the glide is for mono mode. The envelope section over here, these sliders are a direct equivalent of, uh, where are they? These envelope knobs here. So you see this envelope knob, if I turn it all the way to the max, that's the attack all the way to the max, then you'll see that this is up maxed out. I bring that down and come back up here, then you can see that the knob's back down at zero. So I have no idea that it's just an emulation of the original device. You just don't need them. The, they are replicated in their entirety with those knobs. I don't know why they've done that. These are master volume controls. Uh, that's a master volume and there's a master tuning. So that's for the entire instrument. These filter cutoffs here are master filter cutoffs that apply to filter banks one, two, and three. You can see here filter one is on and the other two are off. That's because filter one is currently doing something and the other two filters aren't. If I bring filter two into the equation and instead of patching into the VCA, I come in here instead, oops, and then out of here, down to there, then you can see that filter two is now active because there is a connection to it. And so these, these knobs have an effect on the overall sound. So it's a master cutoff frequency simple enough. This filter bank here, I take all of the other filter stuff away and come straight out of the oscillator into the VCA, right there. This is a, a 14 band, mostly parametric EQ. The lowest band is here. And I think that's set to 80 hertz, if I remember rightly. And then this high one is something like six and a half kilohertz. And they're fixed, but they are basically EQ knobs. The other 12 bands are parametric and they're clustered into pairs. So there's one pair, two pairs, three pairs, multiplied by four gives you 12. So it's literally just a 12 band EQ. You set each of you, that's 125 hertz. And you can hear it accentuating the bass sounds. So you can just shape the tone to your heart's content. Looks a lot more complicated than it is because of the, the layout of the knobs, but it's just an EQ. And this is where we determine whether or not the filter is being applied to VCAs one or two. Heard the EQ kick in then. A master gain knob for the filter bank. You can reset all the knobs. Just turn that one all the way to the limit and then it sets everything back to 12 o'clock. Delay does what you expect a delay to do.
pretty crazy delay. And we have a chorus or phaser, depending on whether you click a little bit at the top. Yeah, the delay doesn't have anything. The delay is just a delay, but this is a chorus and 12 stage phaser. <laughs> Totally fantastic. Uh, and again, we'll see these effects in use a lot when we go through some of the presets. And that's enough. That's that's enough for us to now dive into the presets because that's really where the heart of modular synthesis is all about. We don't deal with these modules in isolation as we've done during the tutorials. We plug them all together to make incredible sounds. And some of the sounds that we get um, as presets from the sound designers at Arturia are fantastic. So I'm going to go through a few of those. Any of the components that I haven't um, dealt with to my satisfaction to this point, I'll try to, to mop up in some of the, the preset videos that we do. But that's it's really the good stuff. Now, what's coming is going to bring all of this stuff together and you're really going to see it as a living organic tool rather than this. It's not a scientific device to be dissected and studied um, in isolation. We want to hear this thing breathe. So hopefully you'll join me for those videos. I'm quite excited to make them. Thanks very much for watching this one and I'll hopefully see you next time.